All right, um, we're going to keep going with item costing. And now we're switching from average over to standard. And standard is usually used in manufacturing or production. It can be used, however, for anything. I mean, if you like standard costing better than other costing for some reason or another, and there are some situations that warrant that, um, you can definitely use that. So let me explain to you how standard works. So we're going to create the standard coffee mug, and you'll see that in the system. And when you just when you actually create this coffee mug, you set up the costing method, oops, I'll do cost method, as standard. And then you have to put the cost, or the standard cost, at something. So you type it in. You actually put it on the card at a value. So in this case, we're going to put that at $5.00. This means that every single piece of that coffee mug is going to cost $5. It doesn't matter what you bought it for. So the system will assign it $5. Now if we go ahead and create a purchase order, and we're going to do that in the system, uh, and we buy, let's say, 10 uh, at the unit cost of $4, total 40, total cost, um, then the system is fine with that, books it, goes into inventory, but the ILE that gets created, the item ledger entry, is ten five dollars for cost, unit cost. And if you scroll uh, or drill into the the unit cost of this, you get value entries. You here get the four dollars which is coming from that purchase, and then you get $1, which is actually posting into a variance account. It's a GL account, right? So I cruise this to the side. So you see on your GL account, your inventory goes up by $5, because that's the cost. Um, the cost of the item, yeah, is $5, but Four dollars goes to pay the vendor because you don't owe them five dollars. You bought it for four, uh, right here. However, one dollar goes into a purchase variance account, and there you can take a look at that account and see if you're actually on track with your five dollars or not. Let's say this was an estimate of what you usually buy it for, and uh, and then these one dollars get pushed aside. So there's many th reasons why you would want to do this. Let's say, for example, you want the, the cost to be slightly higher than you know what you buy it for because, you, because there's going to be freight. And you want to post the freight against the variance account and use that as an accrual. So this is not a production environment. The reason why in production they use standard cost is because the cost is fluctuating a lot. And it's hard for you or for sales to, to know what cost to base their profit on or the markups on. So someone has to draw a line in the sand and say it's going to be at $5 and then production is just going to try to beat that and try to come lower than that. So you're winning on both sides. You basically are creating it cheaper than the line and you're marking it up from the line to make profit on that. So you have both the production side and the sales side working to create margins. Anyways, we'll get more into the uh, standard costing. This is the first video. As you know, we usually do more than one on each method. So let's take a look at the system. Okay, so let's uh, set up a standard coffee mug. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one uh, with no sales tax. We don't need sales tax on this one. And it's going to be the standard coffee mug. And in the costing, I'm going to set it up as standard. And as doing that, standard cost lights up. So I'm going to say that the cost of this is $5. So it gives me this warning here. I'll just overwrite that. So I'm basically ahead of time saying that the cost of this coffee mug is going to be $5, no matter what I buy it for. So let's take a look at a purchase order. If I put this on a purchase order 
and receive it in. So I'll just go here and create a new one and do it to uh, the Fabricam and standard coffee mug um, to the main location. And uh, let's get 10 and the unit cost here. So I put it at $5, but I'm going to say that we actually did pay four. Got it a little cheaper. I'll put it the invoice number and go ahead and post this. Receive an invoice. Um, OK, so this is pretty interesting. Uh, and you might get this in your demo database, but it's basically telling me that purchase variance account must have a value in the general posting setup, domestic, no tax. Okay, so let's get into the general posting setup. And this is giving you an indication of where things are gonna post the difference. So if I go into domestic, no tax, which is right here, we wanna get into the purchase variance account. Um, and if I scroll here to the right, we get purchase variants right here. And I'm going to just put that into the um, uh, same one as overhead applied account in this case, 703 um, for now. Okay. So now I'll just close this out and go ahead and see if I can post it now. Post, receive a new one. Yep, it went through. And if I just close this out and go into the standard coffee mug, uh, where did that end up going? Right here. And take a look at the entries. I have a um, purchase for 10 and the cost is $50. So, but I paid $40 for this. So why isn't it $40? Well, if I click on here, I can see that there is a purchase variance posted. So it actually puts in the direct cost as four, which is what we paid the vendor. And then it adds a dollar because it's a standard cost item for one for $5 and it needs to add one more dollar to make it five. And the posting of this entry or this variance is put into that purchase various account that I just entered in the general ledger setup or the general posting setup. So standard basically forces a certain cost on the item, no matter what you buy it for, but you can account for the difference uh, of that in that GL account. So you can see whether you're on or off by looking at that GL account as you're you know, receiving invoices for this item.